Comedian Paul Reiser made his film acting debut in the 1982 sleeper hit Diner. For the next 10 years, he worked as a journeyman actor, appearing in many television and film roles, including My Two Dads and Aliens. In 1992, he created the hit NBC series Mad About You, in which he co-stars with actress Helen Hunt. He's also a best-selling author and film star, and I am pleased to have him here this evening. Welcome, sir. Thank nice you, sir. You. Nice to meet you. Uh, this little book is now out in paperback after after being number one. It was number one, and uh, I, you know, it took me a long time to understand what that meant. And I had to have the the my editor friend would say, in every store in the country, more people selected this than another yeah. one. Okay, now I get it. Uh, you wanted to be a comedian when you were what, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen? I when I was a little kid, I always wanted to be a comedian, but I didn't know that you could. And then when I was in college or high school and college, and I started to see actual people doing it. People, yeah. When I was in college, when people started succeeding and um, making it from clubs into TV and David Brenner and Gabe Kaplan, I went, oh, there's, a, there's an avenue. There's a place you can go with this. Exactly. There was, there was like, you know, just apply here. And did your parents buy into the idea that you could do this and make a living? No, I think my parents were, you know, like, get regular, be a normal, comedian? Yeah, just go get a regular job. And, I think their attitude was get it out of your system, you know, go have, do, do, have some fun. And the more I did it, the more I liked it, so did I you, stayed. Did you have a sense that you were going to be good, that you, I mean, you would be good in terms of at some, when does one realize, I got something here, I know how to make people laugh, I know how to put together dialogue? I think almost the opposite is true. I think in the beginning, when you're doing it because you love it and you're just sort of called to it, you know, you're just called to the light, Excuse me. I'm going to start again. In the beginning, you, you sort of just call to it out as a, as a passion, and you fortunately don't know how not good you are. You're sort of protected oh, yeah. by this naivete that just go, if I knew that I was really this lousy, I, I've been, I, I would, would stay home. Up. Exactly. Yeah. And then after about two or three years, you look back and go, wow, I was doing that? Yeah, that's exactly right. And in, in addition, there's this other thing. If I know how hard it is to get where... I was going. I would have given up a long time ago and gone to do something <laughs> yeah. else. I mean, if anybody said it's going to take you this long, but each year builds on each year. I think most of the guys in my generation of comics did it solely because that was what they felt called to do. It just, there was no other choice. It wasn't like, gee, should I be a dental hygienist or a comic? You yeah, know, it, it, like, it wasn't law of medicine. Was yeah, it? this oh. is it. This is what I want to do. <laughs> and you stay at it uh, because there's nowhere else that you want to be. Why do you want to be it, though? What was it about comedy? What is my, I think it's it's just sort of your personality. A lot of comics just sort of born or sort of natural performers. It's something that you sort of do in school and sort of you just find yourself doing it anyway. And when you find out that there is a condoned arena in which you can, yeah. in fact, get paid for it, you go, well, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. Then. Do you watch Seinfeld? For sure. sure. You do? Yeah. To learn from it or just for enjoyment? Oh, for enjoyment. I just, I just, I, uh, I think it's just, a great show and and as somebody on another show I, I also admire uh, the hell out of them for what they do just in in production yeah. and they've expanded so much of in the way we look at half-hour comedies with your show with his show and others I just find it amazing how you know you pick up the commonplace what happens to people and enlarge it by craft and writing and acting you know to make it funny and interesting so that we want to watch it even though these are the kinds of things that we all go through well it's funny i mean a, a lot of what people respond to in the show is just, oh that's so true you know yeah, exactly. george collin i know that yeah george collin used to call it oh yeah comedy <laughs> go, oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah and um <laughs> yeah it's fun on our show and we get that all the time it's like oh that's us that's just yeah. that's exactly like my wife and it's sort of people like having company they want to just See other people struggling. And if you with the say to them, "We're going to create this show. It's going to be really funny." And say, "What's it going to be about?" Well, it's about a marriage. It's about a relationship. It's about how people live. Yeah, I think you know, it's not a real big devicey hook. It's yeah, not like no, it's a Martian. You it's know, not it's just like, like Cheers, and, and, they, you know, and well, that's all, relationships it, too. And it can be another. You know, Cosby was about a family. This is about a different type of family. There, it's just every show has their own sensibility and and spin yeah, i guess it's also it's risky to try to intellectualize this and in a sense of saying well is it different and, and what makes it work and why do people watch it and all of that i am interested in why situation why comedians seem to do so well in these things is it because it's an extension of what they were doing on stage i don't know what people always pump to quality yeah I, um it's funny people always say why why are comedians always found in comedies 
I don't think because well, no, firemen were not yeah. funny. Yeah, well, that's yeah. True. yeah, but stand-up comedians. I mean, yeah. there are people who it's stand-up guys that really, and maybe that's what comedians do. They do stand-up, and therefore it's never rule if you can do a sitcom, a situation comedy. It's hard, you know. Some guys, there are a lot of guys who are terrifically funny, and well, when they try to write a show, will sort of water it down or temper themselves, and sometimes it works against you. And you should, I think it works best to try and take whatever it is that works yeah. and put it right out there as raw as you can. Who's had an influence on you? I mean, who um, was you watched and sat and, you know, and, and went to, made your own hmm. mark? You said... I think, I think Robert Klein was a big one. Robert Klein was. Robert Klein was a big influence on me and a, and a lot of my peers. Um, Why was that? I mean, he'll be thrilled to hear that. Oh, I, 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 mean, I, would, hope, I, I would hope he knows it. it. I yeah, hope he knows right. it. Um, he, just, um, he just brought it to a very, somehow accessible level. He changed it. It wasn't, you know, the lounge acts of the 50s. It wasn't, hey, my wife. It was yeah. very hip and new. And his whole performance, he made a language, you know, that, if you look back, was not there before him. It wasn't what Lenny Bruce was doing. It was, it was a different type of thing. And uh, it somehow made it accessible for a lot of people to do. Is comedy different today than it was when you started? I would guess. You know, I, there's been like three or four cycles or something, yeah. apparently, in the last ten years. Where the comedy, and every eight months, there's an article in the Times. The comedy boom, the yeah, decline, yeah. the rise. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. And, um, the coming of women. Well, yeah, well, it's, I was talking about this with a couple of uh, comic friends. When we started 15, 18 years ago, there were 30 clubs in the country, maybe, or, or probably less, and somewhere just boomed to hundreds. And that's good because you're, there are a lot of places to work, but it also kind of waters down yeah. the quality of what's out there. So Before we go, I want to talk about Mad About You. How many seasons? We're just finishing our fourth season. We'll finish it this Sunday with a big one-hour finale. All right. Here is a clip from Matt About You. Take a look at this. If you haven't seen it, you should. Hey, hey. You are such a jackass. <laughs> I'm a jackass? Yes. Fine. So you know what? Leave me for another guy, why don't you? I'm not leaving you. Okay. God. You're hitting me. Interesting. What do you want to do? I don't know. Well, do you want to go home and talk? No, no, I can't go home. I don't like our home. Do you want to go somewhere else and talk? Not particularly. Okay, fine. Where are you going? Well, if you don't want to talk, I'm Who not going to... Who said I didn't want to talk? You did. I did not. I just said, do you want well, to I talk? Well, I didn't like the way you said it. Is that it right there? Is that an essence if you wanted to say, okay, let me tell you what mad about you is. Here's a... Um, well, this is, this is from the one-hour finale, which is yeah. sort of uh, within a little serial of the Buckmans going through a, 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 a problem in their relationship. So that's... What's the problem? They've just been sort of drifting apart and had stepped over the lines of their marital vows, uh, as, as it were. So this is not a particularly funny, you know, but um, it's, well, it was but really fun to do. I mean, th yeah, this, this episode, it, was, it gets really as heavy as we've ever gotten, and it's also really funny, which is, and that was the fun balance. That's, I'd always hoped, was sort of the essence of the show, that make it real and keep it funny and rooted in some kind of... Yeah. And find the reality. balance. Find the balance, yeah. yeah. How much of it do you write? Every other word. I every just, every other, other word, word, and then another guy comes in and he fills it in. Um, no, come on, how much do you write? Um, I, I work mean, do, on I, each I, do you write half of it? or? No, no, we have, we have a staff of terrific writers, and, and, uh, and I will work on each episode and do a few scenes, and then we'll write, rewrite it over the do week. Do you own it? Uh, I have a, a, a small chunk. The lower half of the M in MAD <laughs> is mine. <laughs> it's yours. You want to touch it any time. When does this go into syndication? Uh, this fall, it'll be on all over the country in the middle of the afternoon, for it, example. It'll make you a very happy man. I'll be happy to come by and donuts for your whole staff. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, it was nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, sir. Thank you. We'll see you next time. We'll be right back.